Okay, so welcome to this next video in which we're discussing the Golgi and we're specifically looking at anterograde transport, which means uh, the transport of proteins from the endoplasmic reticulum uh, to the Golgi apparatus, uh, well, to the cis Golgi in particular. Okay, so so far what we've done is we've seen how uh, if you've got a cargo protein in the membrane of the endoplasmic reticulum, uh, then uh, what you can do is uh, you can assemble these COP2 complexes, which stand for uh, coat protein complex type 2. And the way it happens is, firstly, this protein SEC12 in the membrane of the endoplasmic reticulum, it chops off this GDP from SAR1P and binds on a GTP instead. That changes the conformation of SAR1P so that it gets a hydrophobic tail uh, which then allows it to mount itself in the endoplasmic reticular membrane. Okay, then on top of that, what happens is these SEC23, SEC24 homo, uh, sorry, heterodimers come and mount on top of that SAR1P now that it's been activated. And in addition, the SEC 13P and SEC 31P heterotetramers, they also mount, and that creates uh, the COP2 um, protein complex, which then binds to the cargo and is then going to pinch off this vesicle in this way, so you're going to get your cargo being pinched off by these COP2 protein complexes. Okay, now what we want to discuss is what's going to happen to the COP2 protein complex next. Well, basically, it's going to be transported between the membrane of the Golgi and the membrane, well, the, uh, sorry, the membrane of the endoplasmic reticulum here and the membrane of the cis Golgi here. So there are microtubules in between here that make up the actin cytoskeleton. So these are, uh, where should I write this? So I'll put these here. These are microtubules. So let me just get this nice and straight. So these are microtubules. And they span the distance between uh, the endoplasmic reticulum and the membrane of the cis Golgi. And basically what's going to happen is that these COP2 coated vesicles uh, with their protein cargo are going to uh, gradually migrate along these uh, microtubules to the membrane of the cis Golgi, basically. Okay, now in that process, uh, whilst it's migrating from the endoplasmic reticulum to the Golgi, what's going to happen is that it's going to uncoat, which means that these COP2 proteins are going to basically come off the vesicle, so that you end up with an uncoated vesicle like so. So you end up with a vesicle with uh, the protein cargo in here, like so. Okay, right, so let me colour it in turquoise. So here's the protein cargo in the uh, vesicle, basically, that's now been uncoated. Right, so what's now going to happen is that this uncoated vesicle now needs to fuse with the membrane of the cis Golgi. And the reason that you uncoat it, the reason you take the COP2 off, is that you cannot fuse uh, this uh, COP2 coated vesicle whilst it's got the COP2 coating it. Because literally the COP2 will be covering the surface of this vesicle. Uh, I've drawn it, um, you know, spaced out uh, to make it look more easy on the eye. But... Um, in reality, the COP2 is forming a very, uh, a very dense coat over the entire vesicle because that's the reason this vesicle was pinched off in the first place. There was this protein basically encapsulating the vesicle and that's what pulled it off. So you did indeed uh, need the vesicle entirely covered in this um, protein. Right, okay, but you can't fuse the vesicle when it's completely covered because how will the... Um, how will the um, how will the membrane gain access to fuse with this other membrane if it's completely covered in this protein? So you take off the coat, and now what's going to happen is that this, uh, this vesicle is now then going to fuse with the membrane of the cis Golgi. Okay, and we're going to go through that process now. Okay, so turn over. Uh, let's say this is the membrane of the cis Golgi here. Okay, so firstly, there are... Uh, proteins known as Rab proteins in the membrane 
of vesicles that have come from the endoplasmic reticulum and are, um, and are targeted for the Golgi apparatus. And they're believed to play an important part in uh, the specificity because you don't want this vesicle just to end up anywhere. You want it specifically to end up at the Golgi. So there has to be some sort of mechanism for specifically targeting this to the Golgi apparatus rather than just letting it go anywhere. So here's our protein cargo in turquoise here. Okay, and now we need to discuss mechanisms for ensuring specificity. And basically, one of the mechanisms that you have is you have a Rab protein in uh, the in the membrane of the vesicle, and also a Rab protein in the membrane of the Golgi apparatus. So here's uh, a Rab protein in the membrane of the Golgi apparatus here. So in orange here, this is the GM130. Okay, so GM130 is here in orange. And it's an example of a Rab protein. I'll write that in a moment. And in the vesicle, there's a complementary protein to GM130, and that's P115. So this is P115. And P115 and GM130 are both examples of Rab proteins, which are a type of protein that are, is within the RAS family of proteins. Okay, so they, uh, their role is not entirely understood, but they seem to, they seem to promote the specificity, i.e. Uh, you have a specific um, RAS, a RAB protein, rather, on the vesicle that's targeted for the Golgi, and then you have this specific other RAB protein on the Golgi apparatus, and basically they're complementary, so this vesicle can only ever end up in the Golgi because of the specificity of the RAB proteins. Now, it's not the Rab proteins, however, that promote the fusion of uh, this vesicle with the Golgi membrane. Instead, what promotes the fusion is snare proteins. Okay, now, you've probably heard of the snare proteins in the context of synaptic fusion, i.e. the fusion of synaptic vesicles with the plasma membrane, but they are involved here. It's a different set of snare proteins, but they're very, very similar. So, uh, let's discuss the snare proteins that are going to be involved in here. Now, it's slightly different in the synaptic, um, synaptic case, because in the synaptic case, you have one snare that's in the membrane of the uh, vesicle, and then you have um, two snares in the membrane of the um, of the target, if you like. Okay, in this case, you only have one snare in the uh, membrane of the Golgi, and you have three snares in the vesicle. Right, so let's start with the uh, snares that are in the vesicle. So let's start with one here. Okay, so we'll show this one here. So this snare here is going to be syntaxin 5. Okay, so syntaxin 5. And syntaxin 5 is often abbreviated to ST. X5, so syntaxin 5. Now, I will colour syntaxin 5 in a blue colour here. So syntaxin 5 is in blue. Now, what's going to happen is that you're not just going to form one of these uh, comp... Well, actually, I'll draw one complex and then we'll draw more of them later. So syntaxin 5 is one of these snares. Now, you're going to have another one here. Okay. And uh, that this one is called membrane. So, this is another snare that is within the vesicle, okay? Now, snare proteins that are within the vesicle are often referred to as V-snares, for vesicular snares, okay? Uh, so, these are all vesicular snares. So, we're going to have three vesicular snares overall. So, membrane is our second example of a V-snare, and they all have these long alpha helices sort of spanning out here. Okay, now where should we put the final one? We'll put it here. Okay, and what colour should I colour that in? Uh, we'll have it in uh, green. Okay, and then this final one is a protein known as RBETL, Rebtol. Okay, RBETL, Rebtol, Rbetol. Okay, R B E. TL. Right, so these are the three V snares, and then finally, there's one uh, target snare on the membrane of the target compartment. So this is a T snare, standing for target snare. 
Okay, so this stands for target snare. Okay, and um, basically this final snare is a protein known as SEC22B. So again, it's one of these uh, proteins that um, Randy Sheckman um, found, and if you had a mutation in it, would result in far too many vesicles in the cell, i.e. it would result in a uh, SEC mutant yeast. Okay, so what colour should we colour that one in? We'll have it in orange. Right, so they all have these alpha helices. So overall you have these four different alpha helices. Now what will happen is they're all intertwined to form a bundle, basically. And that's what's going to pull these two membranes together. So as you intertwine these together to form a parallel bundle like that, what it's going to do is pull this membrane of the vesicle uh, that's come from the, goal, uh, from the ER Towards this membrane of the Golgi basic, and you're not just going to few, you're not just going to form, sorry, one of these uh, complexes like this, uh, which, by the way, is called a core snare complex. Okay, so this is a core snare complex when all four of these, um, all four of these alpha helices interact together. Okay, and you're not just going to form one of these; you're going to form multiple of them. So you're going to put another one over here, maybe. So here are your three V snares, and here's your T snare, so this is SEC22B, okay, this is syntaxin 5, this is membrane, and finally, then we have RBETL, sorry, RBETL, Rebetl, I don't know how to pronounce that, okay, Rebetl, RBETL, now, uh, so RBETL is in green here, Membrane was in pink. Syntaxin 5 was in blue. Here. And finally, uh, we had covered in SEC22B in orange. And they're going to intertwine with each other and form one of these core snare complexes. And as they intertwine with each other, they're going to pull the two membranes closer together. And then what will happen is the two membranes will fuse and you will empty uh, the contents of this vesicle into the Golgi. Okay, now I just want to introduce you to a bit more terminology with regards to snare... Excuse me. With regards to snare complexes. When you have these uh, V-snares over here, these three V-snares, and this T-snare on the different membranes, I... They are in different membranes. When they're in different membranes like this, this is known as a trans uh, snare complex. So this is a trans snare complex. Trans means across, basically. So they're across different membranes. So this is a trans snare complex. Now, let me show you the alternative, because there is another way that these can be in a complex like this, and it's called the cis snare complex. Because think, what's going to happen when these membranes actually fuse? If we draw the two membranes fusing, okay, so here's our vesicle, and it's now fused together with the membrane, then what you'll have, basically, is you'll have this uh, SEC22B here. This is SEC22B. And now, here are your three V-snares, which were originally in the vesicle, but now this membrane has become confluent with the, visa, uh, with the membrane of the uh, Golgi, basically. So there's no distinction between the two membranes now. They're one and the same. So now what you have is these two, these two um, types of snare, in, which are in this complex together, in the same membrane. So let's colour in each one. So this is SEC22B. In green we have RBETL. So this is RBETL. Okay. Uh, in uh, pink we have membrane. Membrane's here. Okay, so that's membrane. And then finally in blue uh, we have syntaxin 5. So this is syntaxin Five, STX5. Okay, and you can see that this complex, this snare core complex, these four alpha helices wrapped round one another, um, they are all, which I haven't drawn because it would look far too messy, I've drawn them all parallel, they're not going to be like that, they're going to intertwine basically, and that's how they're going to pull these two right together. Okay, so these four alpha helices, um, 
they're now in the same membrane. And this sort of a complex between these types of snares is then known as a cis snare complex, which means they're in the same membrane. Cis means snare at uh, same. So the, this is a cis snare complex because they're in the same membrane. Cis means same. Okay, right.